Hey, how you doing today? Thanks for joining me. In this video, I want to talk about an in-depth concept called transformer action. We're not talking about the transformer movies type of action, but trust me, this is going to be far more exciting than that. Okay, so first thing we have over here, I've got a core drawn with a coil wrapped around the primary of this side of the transformer, and I have a coil wrapped around the secondary of this transformer as well. I'm not going to get into any of the math or anything involved in this. I just simply wanted to describe the concept and what happens throughout this transformer loading. So right now we have an open switch. First thing we're going to do, we're going to close that switch. Now, if you take a look at this primary side of our transformer right now, we have a closed circuit. And really, it's just a coil of wire, which if it was a DC value applied, would probably blow up because it would be a very, very high value of current because there would be nothing really to oppose that except for the resistance of the winding itself. However, we are applying an AC voltage to this transformer and what ends up happening is because of the AC voltage applied, we get a changing magnetic field which causes a counter EMF in the primary. That counter EMF in the primary is what's going to initially limit the current on the primary. So it's going to be a very small amount of current flowing in the primary right at this point where we close this switch. Okay, we are going to call this the exciting current. See, I told you it was going to be more exciting than the Transformers movies. Now, because of this exciting current, we know that if a current flows through a conductor, what's going to happen is around that conductor, we're going to see magnetic lines of force build. And really, that's what's causing the counter EMF in the first place. But those magnetic lines of force are going to aid with each other, and they're going to create a magnetic field, which will be induced into the core of this transformer. We are going to call that exciting flux. And it's going to be in one direction. Sorry about the squeaks. Now, we have an exciting current, which has set up an exciting flux. The other thing that happens, though, is now, because it's AC, it's constantly changing. It's flipping back and forth. This exciting flux is always changing directions. We have a growing and shrinking moving magnetic field. And what it's doing right now is interacting with the coil on the secondary. This coil, again, is just a copper conductor wound around a core. But the minute we have a moving magnetic field interacting with the conductor, Faraday tells us we are going to have an induced voltage, which we do get. On the secondary side of our transformer, we have our induced voltage. And at this point right now, that's it. That's what's happening with our transformer. We have an applied voltage. We close the switch. We have an exciting current. Exciting current will give us things like core losses, all that, but that's, we're not talking about that right now. This exciting current creates an exciting flux. This exciting flux induces a secondary voltage. Okay? So the minute we apply a load to the secondary, first of all, at this point right now, we have zero current flowing in our secondary because it's an open circuit. Current can't flow. But the minute we add a load, we now have a closed circuit. And what immediately starts to happen is we get a current flow on the secondary. And we'll call that I secondary. Okay? And again, as soon as I have a current flowing through a conductor, what happens is it induces or creates rather a magnetic field around that conductor. So we already have our exciting flux in the core of our transformer right now, but this secondary current is going to create a secondary flux. And again, throughout these coils, it's going to aid, but here's the key. It's in the opposite direction that the exciting flux is in. Again, sorry about the squeaks. So, think about that for a second. I have this secondary flux which is created 
that's in opposition to the exciting flux. It's going to cancel out some of the exciting flux. Okay, so this goes down. Exciting flux is reduced. Remember, the exciting flux is what created the counter EMF. The counter EMF on our primary is what limited the current on the primary. So by increasing current on the secondary, we have created a magnetic field that cancels out the exciting flux. The exciting flux being canceled ends up with a, an overall lower exciting flux, which causes less counter EMF. And if I have less counter EMF, I have less current opposing the applied current. And what we end up with is a rise in current on the set, or on the, sorry, on the primary as well. So by increasing current on the primary or secondary, current on the primary also increases. Now, as the current on the primary increases, the exciting flux will increase as well, re-establishing that counter EMF to a value where VA in equals VA out again. Okay, hopefully this has helped. We'll see you next time. Thank you.